Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. A question that I get quite often is how can I work towards connecting positions and uh, play while moving around the neck and be more free and not get boxed in in whatever position I'm playing in. And uh, in this video I'm going to try to talk a little bit about some of the different things you can practice and some of the things you can think about if you want to get better at this. The most important thing that you need to have if you want to move around the neck while you're improvising is probably to have a really good overview of the neck and it's easy to underestimate this, I think. So one thing is, of course, you need to know your scales uh, in all positions. So if you want to play over a G major 7 and you want to be free and move around the neck, then you need to know all your scale positions for G major. Uh, so, so in this case, so if we take the G major 7, uh, you need to know how to connect all the different positions that you use. Uh, and you need to know them really well. And you not only need to know them, you also need to know which uh, notes are in there. So in that way, that's something that has to be really a part of your system already. And it should be sort of easy for you to just play them after each other without having to think about where they are. Because the, the, um, the level where you need to take that has to be a lot higher, really. Uh, of course, you need to know the scale, but the scale is not enough because we're playing over G major 7. So if you want to make lines over G major 7, you probably need to know the arpeggio in all positions as well. That's really important to check out as well, of course, because that's part of what you see. Um, I'll try and sometime and make another video about how you should, or at least how I think you should see the fretboard in terms of the re relationships between shapes and arpeggios and chord tones, uh, and, and a way of understanding that, because that is something that can be a little bit difficult, and also it's something that there are a lot of different approaches to. But uh, that's going to be another video. So, so we have all the positions, uh, and you, I'm assuming that you also know your arpeggio everywhere. And of course, when I say know your arpeggio and actually know your positions, I would also say that you kind of do need to know what the notes are, are in that scale and what the notes are in the arpeggio. That's just part of that overview. At least you want to strive uh, to have that. Or and if not the note name, then at least the interval, so that you know that um, let's say so seven major seven root, third, fifth, that you have that kind of overview. It doesn't really matter if you know it's F sharp, G, B and D, uh, as long as you know what, is, what it is related to the chords that you're playing on. I think that's the important thing with that. So if you have that, then you still need to find ways to sort of connect the different ones and start to play melodies that move across several positions. And um, the idea is here that you, if you play a melody and you want to move, then um, well, we can start by just playing the most simple melody that there is, uh, and that will probably be to just play the scale. I think there's, it's hard to find a melody that's simpler than that. Uh, so if we play a G major scale and then move from from a low note to to the highest note on, on the guitar, uh, then you're kind of you're forced to change position, and uh, you can of course also design that exercise for yourself so that you don't do the same everything. It's not the kind of thing where you want to do that the same every time. You probably want to see if you can just explore different ways of doing it while you're trying to play it. Uh, so that could be something like this. Try to shift in different places and really it's just an exercise in playing a very simple stepwise melody in G major and then move up the neck. And that's kind of what you're forcing yourself to. Of course, you, you can expand upon this because if you have to play three melodies um, that you come up with and you have to shift position at the same time, then probably take some other simple melodies because I would imagine, I would hope that your melodies are more complicated than a scale. Uh, and they're probably also more complicated than playing the scale in diatonic thirds or diatonic triads like this and then still having the overview of what's going on. So those kind of exercises are really useful to do. You can also just try and see how it is to play through diatonic arpeggios on a string set. Those are also just good exercises that are going to help you see if you know your scale positions already and you go then hopefully when you play this, you're kind of see, seeing the scale position around it. Um, and the same for this one. 
So that, that way of thinking is also something that's really useful to, to sort of have in there as well. Um, the next thing you want to do is, of course, because you're thinking, one thing is that we're thinking of the scale, uh, but really when you're improvising, it's sort of a, um, a duality between thinking the scale and the arpeggio, because we have all the notes in the scale, but the ones in the chord, which would be the notes of the arpeggio, are more important. So probably check that out as well in, in several positions, so something like, or not, uh, across the neck, I mean. That would be useful to do as well, and just try different versions of it, and uh, kind of, I think a lot of the time when I'm doing exercises like this, I, ha I have this video where I go over how I practice technique, and I'm often trying to just, um, sort of push myself into a corner and see if I can get out of it again. So sometimes you want to push yourself a little bit and then go into a place where it's like, oh, how am I going to get through this or can I get through this? And once in a while you just crash and that's that's just okay. That's part of learning. And if you then can figure out a way to do it, then that's good. I think that's sort of the way to go about it. Don't be too systematical about this because what you're practicing is not that you have to be able to play the G major 7 uh, in all different variations. What you're practicing is that you have to be able to play a G major 7 arpeggio and move around and always find, or at least as often as possible, find a way to do it that works, that you can actually execute. So keep that in mind when you're trying to improvise and don't try to do all combinations of stuff with this because that, that doesn't make too much sense anyway. Besides playing exercises and scale exercises like this, you of course also just want to spend some time actually improvising across the neck uh, and, and working on that because um, it goes a bit further than just doing the scale and that's of course the real goal is to improvise along the neck so you can find some sort of uh, exercises that are going to be a little bit easier and that you can then take to songs hopefully later. So the first thing would probably be to try and play just rubato um, across the neck and connecting the different positions on one chord. So that would be something like this if I do it for the G major 7. <laughs> take a break when you're playing a phrase and then see well okay where can I go next and that way try and have the overview give yourself a little bit of time and then continue the melody that's the first step then the next thing would be to just see if you can move all the time so That's a good way to just start working on this. And the next thing you can do with this is, if you can do this with most of the chords that you need to play, well actually you probably need to be able to do it with all the chords that you want to play on. Uh, then try and do it with a progression. So take a 2-5-1 with an also dominant or a turnaround or something like this. Move or Force yourself to move along the neck. Maybe first rubato and then try and see if you can do it in, in time also. And, and those are the kind, of, kind of the exercises that I would say are going to build the ability to sort of hear uh, and, and have the over, especially just have the overview to continue your melody if you start here and then go up somewhere else. And then you'll gradually build that. I think one thing you need to be aware of with this is that, of course, it looks flashy if you move from here till here. Uh, and it looks like we're moving really a lot, but essentially uh, there's not really that big a difference because the range of the guitar is on from the low string to the high string is actually pretty big and that means that the difference between this position and this position isn't really that big because we only have three more notes on top and then we lose three no notes in, in the bottom so in that way we're not really going to gain really a lot of ground by, by working on this and you probably also want to be aware that the places where you want to use this is whenever you have something that you want to play that's just easier to play if you move around. Some patterns and some melodies are just easier to work with if you move around in position. 
Um, I think the first thing that comes to mind for me is, is to use uh, like lots of arpeggios. So if you do. Um stuff like this where I'm just moving around and that would be really difficult to play uh, in a position and it's a lot easier to play like this and then you just have to make sure that when you get down here that you don't lose the overview and that you actually know what's going on and that's what you want to be practicing for I think. There are some of the exercises that I would suggest you start working on if you want to have more freedom to move around the neck while you're improvising. Uh, of course there are many ways to go about uh, learning this so um, if you have an exercise that you think, well, this really worked well for me, then leave a comment on the video. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of people who are interested in finding out. Uh, I know I am. And we're always looking for good exercises. So if you have some, some input on this, then uh, please do leave a comment. And also, if uh, you have a question that you think, um, or a topic that you think would make a great video, then let me know about that as well. Uh, I've been doing these Saturday video videos where I'm answering you guys' questions, and uh, they're quite fun to do. Uh, and I think also very useful, so um, keep the questions coming, they're really welcome. welcome. Uh, I enjoy making these videos because I don't have to do too much preparation and writing articles and stuff like that, so, uh, so that's also nice. And it's also just nice to really be able to, to help somebody out if you have something that you're working on. <laughs> If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, about improvising over changes and interesting arpeggios and chord progressions, then subscribe to my channel. I publish a new video every Monday and every Thursday and I've been doing it for some time now, so there's already a lot of material on my channel. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. I'm very grateful for the support that I'm getting from my patrons and uh, if you support me on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. That's about it for this time. Thank you for watching and until next time.